Hey everyone, today is part six of the Generac generator wiring and diagnostic repair uh, procedures. And I'm gonna do a quick overview today. Uh, this is part six on to test all of the windings uh, ohm resistance in your stator and your rotor. Now this procedure is specifically for a brush type alternator. Brushless is a completely different beast and I won't, will not be covering that in this video. So I'm going to go pretty quick through each of the windings. Uh, I don't have the exact values of what they should be. And that for, for demonstration purposes, I'm just going to show you uh, visually where to put your test leads and what uh, rough range, what you can expect between the, the two winding, the two winding uh, points here, whether it be, um, you know, for your main windings or your battery charge windings or your DPE windings. What you first want to start off with is the rotor windings. And the first step is to uh, remove the uh, DC wires that are coming off the voltage regulator first. Remove those completely. And uh, take this, uh, d take the two DBE windings off and take the, off the white snubber cable and take out the voltage regulator completely. Now to test the rotor, uh, ohms what you want to do is you want to take your red and your black lead it doesn't matter what polarity it is it's not polarity sensitive testing that we're doing you want to measure at each of these spade connectors and you should see an ohm reading about maybe 10 to 12 ohms uh, that's what i would typically expect for a good healthy rotor in this uh, model machine again specifications can vary uh, you can also measure right at the slip rings which is i can't really get a good picture of it, but if you remove this brush assembly the two slip rings are right there okay here's a better visual of what i was just talking about um this is a spare rotor that i have uh there's your slip rings right there if you were to measure between these two for this particular rotor you should be getting about seven and a half to nine ohms between slip ring to slip ring and if you're going to be going through the brush assembly, which is on the side here, it does, there's two carbon brushes that slip across these rings. Uh, carbon acts as a bit of a resistor. So if you were to measure at the two spade connectors on the side, uh, probably more around 10 to 12 ohms, but that's what you would, you should expect in the, uh, in measuring the windings on the, of the rotor there. All right. The next windings we're going to go and test is all the windings in the stator. For this particular stator on this particular generator, uh, there's a couple windings uh, that need to be tested. I'm going to start with the main windings. The main windings are pretty easy to identify. Um, these, they're the three thickest wires coming off the stator. There's a little pigtail here that's where all the wires are connecting into the end bell here. Um, for this particular generator, I'm just going to go off the numbers uh, that are on the, on the wires, but essentially your blue and your and your gray here are your two hot wires and then your red number 22 this is um red red 22 is your neutral your blue wire 11 and this is a uh, gray wire 44 these are the main windings that you want to uh you want to test now you're going to get a um your specifications are usually going to be for each half winding uh so what you're going to want to do is take your test lead doesn't matter red or black and you want to measure from gray to red and then blue to red. That's basically your two hot wires, the gray and the and the blue, and you're testing each half of the of the 240 volt winding that's inside your stator. And you should get a reading whatever the specification is. So that's where you want to go and test that. The next thing you should check now is the uh, DPE windings, which is usually it's a red two and six. Uh, wires here. Number two is the blue wire, which should always be, should always be closest to you. Uh, now I have the regulator in here, so I'm not going to take that out. But if you were to take these two off and take your test leads, doesn't matter which uh, way they go, and measure, you should get somewhere between two and three ohms. This is what uh, base. This is what powers AC to your voltage regulator, and then depending on what feedback it's getting from the system control board, is going to vary the amount of DC that goes to your rotor field through the slip rings. Finally, the last windings that you need to check is your battery charge windings. Sometimes uh, generators don't even have battery charge windings, 
uh, but in this case, this generator does. And from what you could see, what you have here, are, these, are your rect uh, these are your bridge rectifiers. There's actually two of them, one on top, one on the bottom. And they do two things. The top one provides about 10 DC amps at 12 volts for the DC outlet in the front here. And the back rectifier on the bottom there, so whatever your preference, uh, this basically the wire runs all the way back to the starter contactor through a 10 amp fuse, which then runs to the positive side of the starter battery. So in order to measure those windings, what you're seeing is a mess of wires. <laughs> but uh, what you want to look for is you want to take these two rectifiers out by removing this bolt. Uh, you'll uh, loosen up these uh, two rectifiers where you can get access to them. I put electrical tape on it so they don't short out against the frame or anything like that. Uh, prevent any type of Murphy's Law from me. Uh, the two outside connectors, you have two browns here for the top, and then you have two yellows for the back. Those are your incoming AC windings for uh, the battery charge windings. What you want to do is disconnect them from the rectifiers, take your test leads on each of the two yellows and two browns, and measure the resistance and see what you get. And if it's in spec, then you can move forward. A lot of times what I see with the uh, rectifiers is that the rectifiers are burnt out, but the winding is still good. And the way to test the rectifier, there's other videos on, on the internet on how to te test a bridge rectifier. You have your two AC, AC leads, and then you have your negative lead, and then you have your positive lead, which is in the center. So that's the, the general overview on how to test each of the winding resistance of your portable generator. Now a lot of times what happens is you see a machine, it's not producing power. Uh, you'll hear a lot of people say, well, you probably just need to flash the field. Well, what flashing the field involves is very simple. What you want to do uh, flashing the field is you want to first remove this voltage regulator completely out of the end bell. Remove the DPEs, remove the snubber cable, and disconnect the white and black wires going to the brush assembly. Normally you would have a 12 volt battery, doesn't matter what size, but you would want to do is make two, take two wires coming in. Uh, you want to make uh, get uh, crimp some spade connectors on there, connect them to each one of these uh, spade connectors here on the brush assembly. Be aware that this is polarity sensitive. You don't want it, even though you could do it in the opposite way, I'm not going to discuss that here. Uh, the white wire is your positive, which is closest to me, and then the black wire, which is your negative, which is closest to the end bell on the engine. So what you want to do now is once you get those connectors and you have two wires coming ready to connect to your battery, start the engine up. Again, this voltage regulator is not going to be in circuit. And hit the two wires with 12 volts, which will then power the brush assembly. With the engine spinning, you'll then be able to measure any type of voltage coming off the outlets, and you should be able to measure AC voltage coming off of the DPEs. And if your rectifiers are in good shape, you should be able to measure at least some DC voltage coming off your outlet and off your starter battery if it's charging. Once you've done that for maybe about a minute or two, shut the engine down, disconnect the battery that you were flashing the field with, and then what you can do is reconnect the voltage regulator of uh, DPE winding snubber cable and then the two uh, the the white and the black wire start it up again and see if it's producing voltage if it's not producing voltage there's a couple different sources that you need to check one the brush assembly in here has a copper spade uh, between the spade connector uh, or I'm sorry not a uh, not a copper spade a copper braid I'm sorry copper braid wire goes from the spade connector to the carbon brush head here that contacts the slip rings. Sometimes that braid breaks either from overheating or just a bad solder joint and you won't get any continuity between the two uh, wires here and it won't power the rotor uh, all the way. So that's the first thing to check. That's an easy that's an easy piece that, to remove in the checkout and if it's test out fine then we'll move on to the next part. Now, if you were flashing the field and you were getting voltage off the DPE windings, while that is a good sign, then what really is going to make the most difference if your DPE windings are in good shape or not is to measure the resistance between them. If you're getting a dead short or 
uh, infinite ohms, there's a good chance that the winding has failed at some point. And even though you are measuring AC voltage coming off of it, you're probably, you're, what the meter's seeing is the induced voltage from the rotor itself. But as soon as you put a load on it and it tries to power the voltage regulator, it pretty much dies. I've seen that happen quite a bit with the DPE windings. Um, they're just very small. They're on the inside of the, of the stator. And then the w main windings are put on top of it. I have mentioned uh, on the on the smokestack forums uh, in in a couple different threads that well if this DPE winding is shorted or no good why can't I just use po steel power from the main windings here say using one of the hot wires and the neutral and then connecting it up to here well that's not going to work see what this is basically set up for this is a self exciting uh, rotor and stator combination which means that. When it's, when it's not running, there's no power, but there's still residual magnetism in the rotor that when the rotor starts spinning, it's going to have that, what little voltage that is still left inside, it's going to then power itself with AC and then it can, creates a continuous loop of power. And then once it gets up to speed and up to voltage, then it's going to be self powering itself. These windings are offset by about 90 degrees from the main windings. Now, the problem with that is, um, the way that the, for that type of mechanism to work, it needs to be offset because as this, as this winding is fully charged, it's powering rotor, the, the, it's powering, uh, powering to the rotor, excuse me, and giving that power to the main windings. If you're trying to power this off the main windings, well, when the main winding is, has its full charge, it's trying to push that full charge to the rotor. It can't self excite anymore. It doesn't create that feedback loop, basically. Another forward on the voltage regulator board, as you can see, there's a heat sink and the silicon controlled rectifier. There's a fan all the way in the back that's connected to the rotor. This is the fan that I was referring to as it spins. It's actually taking cooling air and pushing it across the entire inside of the uh, generator end. As I mentioned in previous videos, that silicon controlled rectifier does see a lot of heat and that's usually a common point of failure. Um, on that particular voltage regulator board, that's always a good thing to check. So I hope this video has helped you guys uh, when testing your portable generators to see what the health of your generator end is. I do apologize, this is not the most succinct type video that I was looking to do. Uh, a lot of uh, further clarification can be found on smokestack.com. I know there's a lot of people that, out there uh, that are that have those specifics on how to test uh, specific model generators. This is specifically for a Generac generator, but again, it could be a Briggs, could be a Craftsman. Mo all generators act and are designed in the very similar manner. Again, if there's any further questions, technical questions, please feel free to uh, message uh, the people on smokestack.com. We have a, a, quite a few people on there that uh, have had experience in repairing these type of machines. Be safe. You're dealing with some pretty lethal voltages in there. You're getting about, for this particular generator, you have like 30 amps at a 240 volts coming through there. You don't want to be touching these wires when the engine is running. Uh, it's, you have to be very careful. Um, it's, it's, you, you could really get yourself hurt if you don't know what you're doing. Uh, especially around here. I mean, there's not really a lot of space between the spade connectors and the, and the, and the side of the end bell. So you don't want to be shorting anything out either. There's a lot of dangers here when you're working with these generators. Please be careful. This, again, this is not meant to, uh, be an instructional video. This is meant to, as a guide to show where you should be testing. If you're not comfortable working on these, on, on these type of machines, leave it to a trained professional. Know when to, to give it to a professional when it goes beyond the scope of your ability. Again, thanks so much for uh, taking time to, to look at these videos. I will post these up on smokestack.com for any uh, specific questions that you might have. Thanks again for everything, guys. Hope all is well. Take care.